important news when it comes to what's going on politically in the adult entertainment industry revolves around a new industry collective. It's a collective. It's not a union. It's not a um, committee. It's a collective called BIPOC. Sounds like Spock. BIPOC. BIPOC. What does BIPOC stands for? It stands for Black and Indigenous People of Color. The BIPOC Adult Industry Collective. You can check it out on BIPOC-collective.org. I was telling a friend of mine online earlier today that I was not going to talk about BIPOC because BIPOC and its members exclude me. I mean, who's been talking about the politics and the news and giving commentary when it comes to the adult entertainment industry for around a decade? Who's of color? Who, who has it been? Me. But I guess, you know, Cinnamon Love couldn't find it within herself to ever reach out to me to ask if I have any input in regards to BIPOC due to her colorism mm -hmm. and her inner big bigotry and prejudice. But anyway, I am going to give BIPOC a little bit of attention since it's out there and it is something that people need to know about. So if you go to their website, here's what it says. The BIPOC Adult Industry Collective is a resource for education and support services to make the adult industry a safe place for everyone who chooses this labor. So it's, since it's a collective, are they also selling weed? Because that's what it sounds like to me. BIPOC collective. Can I go there with a medical card? And are you guys going to give, give me some medicine? I don't smoke weed though. I don't do anything anymore. All I do is podcast. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't indulge in cannabis. Nothing. This is just how I am. <laughs> at BIPOC, Adult Industry Collective, well-being is at the forefront of what we're working together towards. Our programs and activities are designed to be a catalyst that helps community members reach their goals and fulfill their potential their potential in the adult industry, I'm assuming, not their potential in life. Because when you're in the adult industry, you're, you're not gonna go too far. Learn more about the positive impact we have and join us in bringing about positive change. So, um, they put out a list of demands recently. BIPOC Adult Industry Collective announces objectives in ending systemic racism. Yet, they enable the racism because I know damn well that a little something that I contended with recently stemmed from something attached to uh, someone who I believe at least to be a member. But we'll talk about that another day. Should you join BIPOC, I think is what a lot of you might be wondering if you're in the adult industry. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Because everything that they're saying and doing actually um, enables racism. Continues the trend of racism. Why? Because they are self-segregating. You want to stop racism? You stop labeling yourself. Part of the problem with Black Lives Matter, the word black. Tough pill to swallow. But as long as you're going to consistently separate yourself from the rest of humanity, you're gonna have some issues. BIPOC, black and indigenous people of color. Well, why didn't you talk about Latin? that they consider themselves people of color. They don't have a letter in this. What about Asian? They don't have a letter in this, in this acronym. Why is, why does it start with the letter B? So you're gonna give preference to black? What if, a, what if a group of white girls, okay, what if Brandy Love were to look at this and say to herself, 
<laughs> you know what? You know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna make a group and I'm gonna call it WG, White Girls. If there was suddenly an organization in the adult industry specifically for white girls called WG, White Girls, there would be an uproar. But if, if you keep up with this BIPOC bullshit, there will be. There will be. Trust me. Because what if there are some white people who are, um, you know, for equality in the workplace between the various ethnicities, but because they're white, they can't join BIPOC? And then what if Cinnamon Love makes an exception for the white individual? And, and what if somebody else who's in BIPOC and is like, no, they're white, they can't be here. So that's what I'm saying. But anyway, well, let's see what some of these demands are. Because they have a long list of demands. You can find them over on XBiz. But I'm just going to read some of them. But here's the problem with the, with the demands. The demands, not one of the demands needs to be met, honestly. Reason being, BIPOC you're in somebody else's house. You can't walk in somebody else's house and demand that they do what you want them to do. Build your own house. But anyway, moving forward, the BIPOC AIC requests the following. An elimination of wage disparity based solely on race. Okay, that is actually something that y'all need to get an attorney to do because that is illegal. That's something that has been an illegal practice for years. I've been screaming that from the rooftops for a long time, but I, you didn't really need to create BIPOC to get that done. Over the past two weeks, the industry's main talent agents, several performer coalitions and major trade publications have called for or stated that they will support this initiative. We look forward to witnessing progress made in this era. Okay, so that's why they, that should have been a continuation of the first point. Who's writing this? An increase of BIPOC below the line staff in all aspects of production, including makeup artists, grips, gaffers, catering, editors, directors, and producers. You can't force people to hire from your group. That's not gonna work. An industry funded career development pipeline to provide performers looking to move behind the camera with proper education, tools, paid internships, paid internships, <laughs> and employment opportunities to do so. Well, again, you gotta create your own house. Part of the way that you do that is not by excluding individuals who might be outspoken, but who are smart as hell who you're intimidated by and who you practice colorism towards cinnamon love. Like, look, if I were to ever produce an adult film, I would not work with anyone who's a member of BIPOC, anyone who's currently an active talent, who's of color, because I consider them all to be house slaves and I consider them to be extremely prejudiced towards anyone who doesn't tow the company line. I would have to find all new people to cultivate who haven't been brainwashed simply due to how I have been treated over the past decade. And I'm not alone in my feelings when it comes to that. There's actually a lot of people who are of color who over the years have tried to make change, but you have a lot of really pushy bullies who publicly have talked the talk, but behind the scenes not walked the walk like Cinnamon Love, like Misty Stone, like Anna Fox, like Heather Hunter. The only one who I can say really did walk the walk was Angel Kelly. And she didn't get any acknowledgement really until when? <laughs> the, the past couple of years? Yeah, yeah. It's a situation of, um, crabs in a barrel when it comes to the current people of color climate within the adult entertainment industry. But what are some more of these demands? 
An expansion of interracial and IR to include all BIPOC performers with non-BIPOC performers. Okay, well again, you need to make your own content and your own platforms and just label the stuff accordingly. Instead of instead of these demands, why don't you just why doesn't all why don't all the members of BIPOC just become more proficient in creating their own content and building their own online platforms? That's the real solution. What else here? An increase in BIPOC writers, including screenwriters, publicists, journalists, copywriters, marketers, and social media managers in the industry as direct hires or paid internships. If you're a person of color and you're a really good writer and you're a really good um, publicist, why are you going to waste your time on the adult entertainment industry? Don't. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and just make it clear as I end this show right now. If you are a person of color, be you black, indigenous, Asian, Latin, or something along those lines, any of these fools from this organization, BIPOC, approach you and try to recruit you into the adult entertainment industry, just say no, turn away, and run like hell because that is a very dangerous world. It is controlled by organized crime. They will do nothing but bring you down and bring just strife and trouble into your life. And um, you will never reach your full potential in the adult entertainment industry. I'm not anti-porn, but I am anti-abuse and organized crime. And as of current, that's what that world is. If you really truly want to eliminate racism, which in actuality you don't, if you work in the adult entertainment industry because your livelihood is based on it, but if you really want to eliminate racism, you're going to stop talking so much about race. You're not going to label yourself, you, you know, so harshly. You're not going to exclude others. Instead, you're going to do your darndest to create the most inclusive environment possible and that's not by excluding white people playing into white guilt demanding things from white people because that's their house you want equality you have to build your own house extend the house currently built and you extend it through hard work not demands and not just a hashtag not just a website and not just a few damn tweets Okay, so that's it for tonight. Thanks everyone for watching.